Southbound Chicago, 37 59 Chicago. On 38, they are reporting that there's a person who used a counterfeit bill as a business. On Memorial Day, May 25th, 2020, Floyd was hanging out with a couple of his friends, and he drove them to Cup Foods, which is a local neighborhood corner grocery store. George Floyd was a regular customer, maybe once or twice a week, and never had an issue with him. Quiet, pleasant person. He's happy. He's dancing around a little bit. The store clerk says it looked like he was really enjoying himself, having a good Memorial Day. The employees working that evening were under 21 years old. A few of them were teens. I started working for Cup Foods when I was finishing up my senior year of high school. I would say before the incident, I had worked there for about two and a half months. So George Floyd is inside the Cup Foods and goes to buy a pack of cigarettes. And he was walking past the front of the cashier. He was like, um, can I get cigarettes? And I was like, yeah. And he got to the counter and he pulled some money out of his pocket, handed the gentleman some money. I probably took the bill, I probably did this. Um, and then I proceeded to take it and then do this. The store clerk, Chris Martin, looks at the bill and immediately knows this is probably a counterfeit bill. This is fake. Immediately, my anxiety actually went up because I was like, all right, how do I go about this? And that's where the story took the turn that we now know. We went outside, tried to ask him to come inside, and he did not want to come inside. So I went back inside, I talked to my manager, and I offered to pay for the bill. And he said, go back outside, tell him to come inside. Once again, for the second time, he did not want to come inside. And at that point, his manager says, OK, we'll call the police then. Suspect is a black male, six foot four tallest, possibly hospitalized as well. So the officers that were sent to 38th in Chicago after that 911 call were two rookies on the Minneapolis Police Department. Officer Lane, just a matter of days on the force, and Officer King had been on a, a little bit longer. So we got there and uh, entered the building. There was a staff member there that said, you know, they're still here. I'm going to drive off this park right here to take the from the and we see in those body camera videos from Officer Lane and Officer King that they go out to the SUV. As I was walking across the street, uh, they both started kind of digging underneath the seat, which uh, looked like they were reaching for something. And Officer Lane walks up to George Floyd's side of the car and taps the window with the butt end of his flashlight. You can see George Floyd react immediately. He's completely startled, shocked that someone is at the window, and opens the door. Stay in the car. Let me sorry. see your other hand. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm Let sorry. me see your other please, hand. Please, please, Ms. Both hands. Do nothing. Put I, your please, hands please, up please, right now. He didn't do that. And he was just, you know, oh, it's not a big deal or whatever. And he kept his hand down there. Um, and he just you know, glanced back. So I took my gun out. But what are you feeling at that point? I'm wondering what he's doing. and want to know where his other hand is going. Why is there a gun coming out? I think that caught a lot of people's attention as to, wait, this was a call about a, a, a bogus bill. Dang, man. From the first images from the body camera video, you see this encounter that seems aggressive almost from the start. Put your hands on top of your head. In all our years of, of running our convenience store, I don't think I remember ever having a violent confrontation with somebody with a with a counterfeit bill. Step out and face away. Okay, Mr. Officer, please don't shoot me. Please, man. I'm not going to shoot please. you. Step out and face no. away. I'm going to get out of here, man. Please don't shoot me, man. Not shooting you, man. He's telling them I'm scared. I don't want to die today. They're telling him you're not going to die. You're not going to die. Step out of the vehicle and step away from me, all right? And I was concerned that he was going to try and take off, uh, drive away in the vehicle. So um, I kind of pulled him out. He started trying to turn around. So I pushed him forward into the door frame, which is another thing we were taught to do if someone's not complying. Stop resisting him. Yes, you are. King came around, and we ended up getting handcuffed. Stand up. Please, please, man. Stand up. People of our skin color, when we start getting treated like that by the police, we tend to tense up and 
we tend to get scared a little bit. Take a seat. Sit down for me. Thank you, man. Thank you, Mazzotti. Yo, sit down. Thank you, man. You see the film, he didn't resist. He didn't do anything. He was panicking, he was scared because he probably felt what was about to happen to him. You got an ID on you? <laughs> I got one of them. <laughs> All right, what's your name? It's George. George? George Perry Floyd. We were already trained as kids on what and what not to do. And your parents told you, if you see the police, you better not do nothing. You lay on that ground, lay your hands out, don't do nothing to them because everybody knew what was going on. George Floyd grew up in the CUNY homes in Houston. It's known as one of the notoriously toughest areas in Houston. CUNY Homes is one of the largest housing development projects in Houston, Texas, where George Floyd grew up. Most of the people there are on Section 8, are low income, impoverished. Few have jobs. Poor, poor. Poor beyond measure. They didn't have nothing. Third Ward was one of these places where you always saw police officers affecting traffic stops or, or stopping individuals suspected of having drugs or guns or whatever. So for George Floyd, growing up in a place like that, it was a life surrounded by police and by drugs and by violence. Growing up, our only way out that we thought was our way out was sports rapping or drugs. The reason being, we didn't have no doctors in our families. We didn't have no lawyers. The only way you ran into a lawyer was if someone got in trouble. For George, the way out, it ended up being sports, basketball, and football. Floyd played football, and he was good at it. But he was amazing on the basketball court. Oh, it was like, ooh. It was very few people that could dunk the ball in middle school. Perry was one. He did get a scholarship to college for sports. He was just that good. His plans was if he didn't make it for us, the NBA or the NFL, he wanted to be in law enforcement. He wanted to be a, a chief of police at one time. But George was unprepared academically for the rigors that he would encounter in college. And it was when he came home that he started having problems with, with the law. Because, man, people quick to count you out, man, but just so strict on counting you in. OK, can I talk to you, please? Hey, so you get in this car, we can talk. One of my employees called and said, hey, Mike, Mike. I said, what, what? She said, there's a guy outside, and the police are killing him. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Hey, Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.